the creepiest and scariest things people have ever experienced in their life. Please like and subscribe to support us. I lived in a pretty nice neighborhood when I was younger. I'm 20 years old now, so not much younger. All the people who lived there would hang up lights for Christmas, hand out candy to trick-or-treaters, and mow their lawns as they should. I was about 10 years old at the time, and all the kids who lived in the neighborhood, about six of us, were hanging out. And just like any other summer day, we were all riding skateboards around the neighborhood loop. Imagine an oval that is about a mile in circumference, and that's the neighborhood layout. Skateboarding was a phase we all went through at the time together. I was the youngest kid, and everyone else was the same age. They were all about four years older than me, but I was accepted as part of the group for being younger. As we grew up, there was what we called a witch's grave right over the top of the hill in our neighborhood. At the time, we didn't know why there was a witch's grave, but it was always creepy just going to the top part of the neighborhood because of the fact that there was a witch's grave. We were all on our way to the top of the neighborhood on the road, trying to do tricks and whatnot. We make it about three quarters of the way to the top, and we all stop. It was just quiet. Dead quiet. No sound. No wind. Nothing. We stopped and looked around and at each other. We hear a chalkboard screech scream coming from a woman just on top of the hill. With silence following for three seconds, and then bang. A gunshot. A few years ago, me and a bunch of friends and family of my friends drove four to five cars to this old abandoned school in the middle of nowhere, where it's said to be haunted. This was in the winter, and there was like one to two meters of snow. The front door to the school was snowed down, so we just walked around the school. Some of my friends dared to look in through the windows, but they didn't see anything out of the ordinary. Just old chairs, and everything was dusted down. So here is the creepy part that still gives me goosebumps just to think about. It was snowing outside, not like a blizzard, but it was kind of heavy snowing. And there was no way into the school, no footprints, no broken windows, where someone could have climbed in. So when we walked around the school, one of us noticed glass laying on top of the snow. We look up to find the top window on the front side of the school broken. Just as it's been broken from the inside, and very, very recently since the glass was laying on top of the snow. We were pretty quick to drive off, so I didn't really see anything paranormal, but that experience was enough for me. I used to sneak out of my house as a teenager to go spend time with my girlfriend, who lived three miles away. I would normally ride my bike but decided against it that night for some reason. After I leave my girlfriend's house, I head home when I see a pair of headlights coming down the road opposite me. As soon as the car passed me, I could see the surrounding area light up red from their taillights, they were slowing down. The car turned into a side road, I didn't think much of it, probably someone coming home from a bar or something. About a minute passes, and I see headlights coming from behind me, it was the same car. As it got closer to me, it slowed down. I calmly reached for my pocket knife in case anything fucky happened. I wasn't ready for what I was about to see. The car pulled up beside me. I looked inside, and it was a man dressed as a clown. He smiled at me, not a friendly smile either, it was a smile that could induce nightmares, with a lowered brow and showing his pearly whites. I could feel my legs go numb, and I couldn't look away. After about 15 seconds of driving by me at walking speed, he sped off over the hill. A veil of relief fell over me as I thought I was home free, but nope, there they were, the same distinct headlights roaring over the hill. I knew it was him as I gripped my blade as hard as I could, preparing to defend myself. He slowed down as he approached me, this time his smiling face was gone. He was dead-faced, what I had thought was some cruel joke quickly erupted into the realization that this clown had something sinister planned. He drove past me and turned onto a side road once again, and while he was turning around, I knew I had to act fast. I took off running into the woods, knowing my house was only a mile away. I stayed in the shadows, praying I wouldn't be spotted. Thankfully, I got home safely that night. I still wonder what would have happened if I had kept walking the road. One night after my so and I had first started dating, we were looking for somewhere to meet that was fairly quiet and out of the way. We live in a small town full of nosy people who would have misconstrued simple talking and a little bit of snuggling as something horrible. There is a small old church about two miles from my house on an old country road. While a little out of the way, the old church had some lights nearby, so it was not dark by any means. Something felt off from the moment we drove up, which was odd because we had been there before, both during the day and at night, and nothing ever felt wrong. We sat and talked for a while, and I tried to put that feeling in the back of my mind. My so was tired, so he dozed off for a while. That off feeling never went away but kept getting stronger. 
I was able to identify that the feeling was that we were being watched by someone or something. Whatever it was, I believed that it was in the woods behind the church because I kept being drawn to look there. That watched feeling got to the point that, if we had stayed there a little longer, I guarantee whatever was watching would have shown themselves and would have harmed us. I woke up my so and told him that we had to leave. Once we were far away, I explained to him what had happened. I expected him to think I was silly, but he said that a person's instinct can pick up on that kind of stuff, and I was probably right. I had never had that feeling before or since, and we have never gone back there at night. There was a time in my life where I was dealing with a very bad disease, and anxiety was making it worse, so my doctor prescribed me Xanax. However, if I took it for a few days straight due to panic attacks and then stopped taking it suddenly, I would get horrible, horrible night terrors. One in particular, which I can't forget, was when I felt like I was being pulled off of my bed. There were these short bursts of intense tugging. My eyes were open, and so I saw the ceiling moving to the side, so I knew I was moving, however, I otherwise felt paralyzed. I vividly remember thinking, I'm having a night terror, and if I reach out my hand to feel what is pulling me off the bed, I won't feel anything there. I had just enough strength to reach my hand out and touch the thing that was pulling me, and all I felt was wet fur that was icy cold, as though some huge dog that had died and been submerged in cold water was pulling me off my bed. Someone trying to break into my house is up there in the scariest place. It was maybe 10.30 at night. We had recently moved to 10 acres out in the country. Our house was at the back of the 10 acres and was positioned so the front of the house faced a back corner. It was very secluded. We didn't have curtains or shades up yet. My husband was at work, and I was sitting on the couch with my shirt off, nursing my daughter. I heard a click at the door. The storm door was messed up, so you had to lift it to open it. I guess they realized that, and then the door knob started turning and the door started shaking back and forth. Thank goodness I remembered to lock it. I jumped up and screamed for them to get the fuck away and that I was going to get the gun. I ran down the hall with the baby, closed myself in the closet, and called 911. I got a busy signal. Unbelievable. I called again and got through. I then called my husband. It took the cops about 15 minutes to get there, and the perp was long gone. The scariest thing is wondering what they wanted and what they were going to do to me. I often wonder how long they stood at the window watching me with my shirt off. They either walked up our very long driveway or drove up with their lights off. A few other creepy things happened at that house. One car pulling up late at night turned its lights off. Then, I guess, they turned around, with their lights still off, and started to leave. They turned their lights back on about halfway down the driveway. Needless to say, we decided to move. I'm really late, but fuck it. It was around 9 or 10 PM, and I was at a corner store a block away from my house getting milk. I walk out and start on my way back home, and two pit bulls come around the corner in the direction of my house. I tread on, hoping they'd just go on their way, but one of them looked in my direction, and its ears perked up. It began to run toward me, and the other one followed. At that moment, I was 100% sure I was fucked, but I'll be damned if I drop this gallon I paid $5 for and ran. So I just kept walking at the same exact pace, like an idiot, toward the dogs. Neither of them attacked me when they got to me, though. They were both just wagging their tails and looking up at me, then they ran off into the distance. As soon as I walked into my house, I realized how badly I was shaking and collapsed on the ground. Excuse my shitty storytelling, but damn, that was a wild man. Hopefully they got home safely, though. If anyone reading this has dog knowledge, did I do something right or did those dogs just come from a good home? I was doing security about 25 years ago and assigned to a large, old converted factory building that had been turned into condos. At the far end of the building, there was an entrance that almost no one used. So I came out one night on my rounds around 2 AM. To find a woman smoking. It began to rain, so I stayed under the overhang above the entrance. I asked how it was going, and she said she was sad because today would have been my son's first birthday. I said I was sorry about her loss, and she proceeded to tell me how he died. She was sleeping on one of the couches when he was an infant, she was on the other. Sometime during her nap, she put her leg on him and stopped his breathing, and he died. I wasn't sure what to say, and then she adds my boyfriend says it was a good thing because he didn't really like someone else's kid in his house. Like a punch in the gut, the impression hit that maybe that kid wasn't the victim of an accident. I got the fuck out of there and away before I said something I would regret. One of the people in that building later told me the police investigated but couldn't prove that murder had been suspected. When I was little, I would go to my grandparents' house a lot. My grandpa slept in a separate bedroom from my grandpa because he snores and keeps her up, so I would sleep in her bed. 
One night I woke up and looked to my left and saw this huge black dog walking along their closet doors, the closet door lined the whole wall, maybe 10 to 12 feet, with a little wall in between for a his and her type closet, and sniffing at the bottom of the doors. I remember catching my breath and instantly throwing the blankets over my head. I laid there, freaked the hell out, and eventually fell back asleep. At the time, they did have a black dog, but he wasn't allowed upstairs, only downstairs, and they kept the door separating the floors closed all the time. When I mentioned what I saw in the morning, I asked if the dog had gotten upstairs by accident, and they said no. Looking back at the memory, I don't remember hearing the dog's paws on the floors or its breathing. Another one is a dream I had at my grandparents' house again, in the same bed, still really young. It was about wolves that could walk on two legs, though at the time I didn't really know of werewolves or anything about them. But I was in a small town, and these wolves would run it on all fours, they were all brown too, with no color variation, picking up people and then walking away with them slung over their shoulders out of town. And I remember I was in a small building like an old school or library, and my grandma was typing something on a computer that faced huge windows looking outside. And I could see people running, wolves running, and people being carried. But she didn't notice. She didn't respond to my attempts to get her attention. I woke up at some point in the dream, breathing heavily and looking around, and after I calmed down, I snuggled closer to my grandma and hoped my dream was over now that I had broken the cycle by waking up. I closed my eyes, though, and the damn thing started right back where it left off. Now a huge passing wolf had seen my grandma, and it ran in through the door, like pushed it open, didn't break any glass, and ran in. I hid under a table, but in full view of everything, like no cover, and watched it pick my grandma up, who didn't struggle, sling her over its shoulder, and take her away. When I ran out of the building, all the wolves were leaving town with their trophies in tow. When I woke up again, it was morning, and I didn't go back to sleep. I have never since had a dream continue playing in my mind if I wake up in the middle of it. Supposedly, there were spirits in my grandparents' home, but I never witnessed any of them or anything they caused. When my mom and aunt were little, though, they grew up in the house. My aunt was coming up the stairs by herself and fell backwards down them. Thankfully, she didn't get hurt, but she said it felt like someone put their hand on her chest and pushed her backwards. But no one was with her. This would have happened when I was probably 11 years old. It was the 4th of July, and my neighborhood would go all out. Collectively, our street had the biggest show and easily 15 grand worth of fireworks. And at the base of the street this particular year, some sort of garage band was performing, and a large group of trashy individuals gathered around and began drinking. They partied well into the night, so I couldn't sleep once the fireworks stopped. I woke up probably at 5 or 6 and was completely exhausted. I went to my basement to play on my GameCube, and I saw my basement door wide open with boot prints all over our floor. The intruder had been tearing around our stuff and had pulled our big boxy TV off the wall and put it by the door, and a huge man, probably 6 feet 4 inches or easily 250 plus, was lying on our sofa. Beer cans everywhere. I stood there frozen in fear, and I almost fell over but caught myself with the wall. I creeped back up the stairs and woke my grandparents, who then springed into action and huddled me and my brothers in my parents' room. My dad and grandpa grabbed two of our shotguns and waited at the door while we called the cops. I remember hearing him rummaging around below us. We had unlocked the front door, and the cops caught the guy trying to run up the stairs, out the front door, and right into the caring arms of the sheriff. He must have known we were armed or knew he was there, and he ditched his knife in our backyard. He had begun organizing more of our stuff by the door, like he was moving out. Freaky as hell. But I think my dad and grandpa are the reason I'm not scared of invasion. The way they calmed us and looked after us was pretty cool, and I hope to have that level of focus and love if that ever happens to my kids. This happened about three years ago. I was 16 but didn't have my license, but my other friend did, and he drove me and my group around a lot. We heard about a cult in a neighborhood not too far from ours, I can now clarify with more research on the internet that this was in fact an actual cult, one that relates to Christianity. I was afraid to go in, as they had a sort of campus with buildings. My friend parked his car, and the rest of my friends got out. I stayed in the car, in the driver's seat. I was told that if I saw a car, I should drive around the block so an officer wouldn't ticket me. It sounded alright to me. My friends hopped the fence, and I waited right across the street in the car. I used my time by just listening to the radio. I was calm until I heard footsteps in the forest that was to my right. I didn't think much of it, it might be an animal or something. But then I heard it more often. I texted one of my friends, we'll call him Steve. Steve said they were still walking around the campus, messing with stuff. Okay, great, so what was this sound? 
I didn't think too much of it until I saw a car in my rear view mirror. So I did as I was told, turned on the car, and started driving around the block. I made some turns, and then I checked my rear view. The car I saw before was still behind me, almost tailgating me. The speed limit was 30, but I started to get scared. I hit 45 and made some wild turns, but the car was still following me. I passed the cult, and I see my friends Steve and Brad running away. I stop the car and unlock the doors. They jump in the car within the blink of an eye and start yelling, you need to drive. Drive. At this point, I knew the car was following me, and whatever my friends did had some correlation. Apparently my friends were walking around when two of my other friends, Drake and Anthony, started throwing rocks at the windows where people were doing some prayer thing, which then led to them knocking on the glass. The cult members proceeded to look at them, and then the two friends in the car dashed to me, Drake and Anthony were still there. I told them that there was a car following me, and my friends had some hope that it was just a coincidence. I started driving with more wild, sharper turns, and I hit 60 miles per hour. I eventually drove myself into a no outlet zone, by accident, of course. I figured this was the end. But I made a quick three point turn and floored it out of there. The car proceeded to turn into a driveway. We then laughed at how it was just someone going home. But then we saw the reverse lights turn on. The car was once again behind me. I drove for another 5 minutes, eventually losing the driver. I picked up the rest of my friends, who claimed that other cult members started to come out and follow them on foot. It was too risky to stop and change drivers, so I drove to my friend Drake's house, where we all told our part of the story. Drake's older brother walks out and says that he did the same thing a couple years ago, but on a bike. I had asked him if a car chased him, he said yes and described it perfectly to the one I had described. He claimed it was a cult member who chased intruders just to scare them off. I was just glad to be out of there. We haven't returned to the cult since. I took a summer trip to my grandparents' house in Wyoming a few years ago with my cousin. My mom loves the area up there, so she decided to tag along as well. The house has three bedrooms. My grandparents had one, obviously, my mom got the other, and my cousin and I planned on rotating who got the spare room. The one who wasn't in the spare room slept on the couch in the living room. We decided amongst ourselves that he'd get the room the first night. The couch I was lying on is on one end of the living room, facing the kitchen. My grandparents' room is on the far end of the kitchen. I get settled down, read a little bit, and finally turn off the light to go to sleep. My eyes close, and I start to drift off. I hear soft footsteps coming out of my grandparents' room into the kitchen. I find it odd that they'd be making anything to eat this late at night, so I open my eyes. Nothing. Okay, kind of weird, but whatever. I'm just jet lagged, probably. The second I close my eyes again, the footsteps start coming toward me again. A little faster now, a normal walking speed. I open my eyes to nothing again. Now I'm freaked out, but if it stops now, I can probably sleep eventually. One last time, I closed my eyes. The footsteps take off at a dead sprint toward me, but again, there's nothing when I open my eyes. I grabbed my book and blanket, and my cousin and I traded off sleeping on the floor in the same room instead. Neither of us wanted to use that damn couch after that. The next morning, my mom woke up while the grandparents were making breakfast. Her door had been locked for privacy, so she could sleep off the plane ride. She came out of her room convinced that we'd somehow bypass the lock. Insisting that someone had woken her up by messing with her. She felt it was clear as day, someone had taken a finger and run it up the length of her spine to wake her up. Nobody had even been over to that part of the house that morning. What makes it even weirder is that my mom's grandmother used to wake her up in the same way when my mom was a young girl. House sitting for a couple who were friends with my mom. It was a very secluded house on the edge of town, backed up against mountains and a canyon. It was a small community of really old houses owned by the power company, and the husband was the foreman who ran the station located there, the power company just let them live there for free, the other houses were empty, they were the only ones who lived there. It was a very cool area, and a bunch of movies had been filmed there too. It was a weekend in early 2004 while I was in college. I'd had some friends over that night, and we just hung out, drank a few drinks, sat in the hot tub, watched movies, etc. While we were in the hot tub, we heard what sounded like rocks falling, being up against the mountain. We thought it was just deer walking around up above us, kicking rocks down, but I didn't think much of it. My friends bailed around 1am, and I decided to wind down for the night. A storm had moved in, and it was snowing pretty well. I remember turning out all the lights and just sitting in the dark family room with their dog Moki for a little while. After some time, I headed upstairs and went to bed. Moki slept on the floor by my bed. 
I woke up to Moki's whining, you know the sound where a dog sounds concerned? Not quite growling, not quite crying, just kind of nervously groaning. He was on my bed by now, at my feet, just looking out the window. I figured he'd probably sensed a deer or something out on the lawn, but he was visibly nervous, and this made me nervous. I asked him what was wrong, and he looked over at me for a second, then looked back to the window. Shit, I thought, maybe someone's out there. So after a few minutes, I get out of bed and walk over to the window to look outside. It had stopped snowing, but it was so dark I couldn't see much. I glanced around for a little bit but couldn't see anything. I knew I had locked the doors downstairs, but I was still feeling a little uneasy. I climbed back into bed, and Moki just stayed there with me. I never heard anything outside, and eventually he laid his head back down. I fell back asleep. The next morning, I decided to make a McDonald's breakfast run. I went outside to go to my car, and that's when I noticed the footprints in the snow. All over the freaking property, they had walked up to a few different windows and doors of the house, they had surrounded my car, none of the windows were broken, and the doors were all locked, fortunately. Whoever it was was probably just casing the joint, checking windows, doors, etc. I ran back inside and called my mom's friends. They were coming home that day, Sunday, and said it was most likely some transient or vagrant, as they tend to wander in here from time to time. There's a fairly busy road and bike trail nearby where a lot of them will set up temporary shelters. Nothing happened while I was there, and they got home later that day, which was a relief. But holy shit, it was still scary knowing that some sick fuck was trying to get into the house while I was there. Halfway through a 200 mile motorcycle ride and about 100 miles from anything and not near anywhere you would want to go fuck around in the desert. I found a freshly shot and dead body that was next to a motor home someone was cooking meth in. The generator was still running and I hightailed it in case whoever did it was still around. I was able to call the cops like three hours later, when I had service. Then another time, during a motorcycle race, I found a dead wild horse with its head hacked off with like a machete or something. That one was in Utah, and I didn't know the area, so I have no idea what that could have been. You see a lot of weird stuff if you are in the desert long enough. I also saw a dude just jogging in 110 degree heat about 10 miles from a trailhead one time, which wasn't creepy, just insane. I made sure to ride back the same way to make sure he wasn't dead. This will get buried, but I was probably 16 years old or maybe 15. I was homeschooled and was up around 1 to 2.30 am when an older friend of mine instant messaged me and asked if I wanted to hang out. Which basically meant driving around and smoking cigarettes. So he picks me up, and we start cruising around, a super small town, rural, lots of backroads, and there's a state park nearby with thousands of acres of woods and a big lake. Everyone I know has a weird story about this state park, and having spent some time in those woods by myself, it's a very eerie feeling. You never quite feel alone, hear things, it's freaky. So anyway, we're cruising down this road, and he has a late 80s firebird, kind of low to the ground, and the road dead-ended, but there was a driveway of an abandoned or poorly maintained house to the right. He swings the car in the driveway to turn around, and I was mid-sentence of a story when we both see this distorted black shadow-looking thing all hunched over. It turns towards us and starts moving closer, it looked more like the absence of all light than an actual physical being. He throws it in reverse and takes off down the road, and we both didn't even say a word. A few minutes later, he says, did you see that? And I said, what the fuck was that? We actually went back after we calmed ourselves down to see if we saw any prints in the driveway. Because of how fast it moved towards us, anything would have left tracks. I've gone by that house maybe one to two times in the past 10 years, and it still freaks me out. This happened to me maybe six years ago. I then lived in a pretty small room and a kitchen apartment on the top floor of that building. This meant I slept in the same room I had my couch in. I had a large bookshelf between the bed and the rest of the room. One night I woke up to some noise going on in the other end of the apartment by that couch. It sounded like nothing I've ever heard before, like scratching or maybe even crying or sobbing. I was fully awake at this time, lying in bed, and just hoping it would stop. I opened my eyes just a glimpse, slowly, just to see the most bizarre thing. On the other side of the room, there's someone actually sitting on my couch. This was no hallucination, as the moonlight struck the room pretty intensely. I actually saw someone sitting on my couch. I was absolutely freaked out but didn't move one bit. Sweat started to build up on my face. I couldn't believe this was happening. I looked at my alarm clock. At exactly 3 o'clock, I built up courage and opened my eyes more to see what was really going on. And there on the couch, a man is sitting with his face in his hands, sobbing or almost crying. Every hair on my body stood up, and the man stopped crying and obviously noticed me. 
He looked at me, and my world stopped. It was me. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Am I dreaming? No, I am not. The figure stared at me for maybe 6 to 7 seconds before disappearing completely. I was in shock. This was my first episode of sleep paralysis, and it has only gotten worse since. In the following years, I had up to 4 episodes per month. It has since stopped almost completely. I highly recommend that people who have sleep paralysis not sleep on their backs. This helped me a lot. I've learned to cope with my episodes nowadays by just not opening my eyes at all until they occur. If I open them, my brain will cook up the most horrible things it can to scare the living soul out of me. Two years ago, during the summer, I was at a gig on a meadow far away from my town, all by myself, there were people I knew, but I wasn't really a part of any group. For some reason, the concert ended earlier, so I was supposed to wait for my ride home for two hours, and I was like hell, nah man, so I decided I'd simply go home by foot. It was about an hour long walk, why not? I like some quality time from time to time. When I went off, it was already night, the road was straight, with a field and houses to my left, and a very steep hill on my right. At one point, street lights got further and further from each other, and the houses on the left were only silhouettes. Then, all of a sudden, I hear a savage barking noise and see two dogs rushing towards me. They seemed like they could well hurt me, and they didn't seem to fucking stop, I couldn't see any kind of leash or chain behind them. So at the moment, I freeze, knowing that I couldn't outrun them, and my basic instinct told me to stop, prepare one leg to kick the larger dog first, and then it should be easier to deal with the smaller. But I was all the time thinking this would end badly for me, no doubt. Shit is about to happen. They rushed to me for an unusual amount of time, and eventually, I saw their chains attached to a line above the house. I don't remember ever being terrified out of my mind for my very life before or after that. I am an outdoorsman, I'm very experienced in hunting, camping, hiking, and general survival. I'm very familiar with and used to wildlife, and I was charged by what I believe was a cryptid called a dogman. It charged me and my cousin, it was not a bear, a bear cannot move how it does, and it was not a normal wolf as they can't comfortably run on two legs, whereas what charged us seemed natural at doing. I can elaborate further if you wish. This happened around June or July of 2007, I believe. I was around 17 years old and more cocky then, but still somewhat knowledgeable of the outdoors. My family used to own a cabin in NW Wisconsin. I basically grew up there in the summer, I knew the woods well, but at night it was wise to stay in the cabin, or at least by the bonfire by the beach, because of bears, wolves, and cougars. One of the creepiest things was that if you were having a bonfire, the tree line was visible from the fire pit and beach, and at night you always felt like you were being watched from that tree line. But during the day, the woods always seemed normal, not so creepy, that is, until this incident. So this happened somewhere between 1200 and 1400. Me and my cousin were having an airsoft battle. I was in full woodland camo, he was not. I retreated onto the ATV trail into the woods for a tactical advantage, and our battle took us about 200 meters, or about a third of the way up the trail. We had enough at this point and were standing at the edge of a clearing on the trail talking, and he was maybe 10 feet from me. When I decided to mess with him, I shushed him and said we're being watched, he froze. Then I realized the woods were dead quiet, and I got spooked and started scanning the tree line and the other edge of the clearing from left to right when I saw it. Its teeth gave it away, it was panting and staring at my cousin. I don't expect you to believe me, but what I saw was a wolf as big as a black bear, at least 300 pounds, but it wasn't normal. This wolf was on two legs, crouching next to a tree with its arm grasping the tree, grasping with a clawed hand. It had reddish brown fur. I told my cousin that we have to go, and next thing I know, he is sprinting, and I look back at Wolfie, who had locked on and sprinted a few steps on two feet, and then I turn and run when it looked like Wolfie was dropping to all fours. It charged us and sounded right on our asses barreling through the brush, but for whatever reason, let us go when we broke out of the tree line and headed for the cabin. What stuck with me the most was the sheer size. Wolfie appeared to be nearly seven tall when upright, and where it should have had front paws, it appeared to have large clawed hands. Now I'm not sure how to explain it rationally. I have heard wolves will occasionally kind of walk upright, but as far as I know, they can't sprint on two legs, nor do wolves get that big, and black bears more often waddle on two legs. The closest description is silly, a werewolf or dogman. Thank you for reading. So, this happened, and I still don't really know what to make of it. My mom and dad had gone out on a night out, and I was watching my two younger sisters. My boyfriend at the time was staying over too. We went to bed before my parents got home, and while we were lying in bed talking, we heard someone moving about downstairs. 
It started quietly, but then we heard bangs and loud noises coming from the kitchen. The boy went to the top of the stairs and had a look over the banister, and he said he could see the shadow of someone in the kitchen on the hallway wall. I shit myself, not literally, and went to my sister's room to get them so we could call the police. As I went across the landing, I could hear cupboards opening in the kitchen, one of them had a distinctive squeak when you opened it, and stuff rattling. I got my sisters to sneak into my room, and then me and the boyfriend sat with our backs against the door and called the police. While he was on the phone with them, we heard my parents getting out of a taxi outside, and the noises suddenly stopped. The boy let the police know that my parents were home, and they stayed on the phone while we went downstairs. I tl slash doctored my dad and, being drunk, started yelling come out, you cunt while he was walking around the house, but there was no one there. The only evidence that something was amiss was that the kitchen bin was on its side with rubbish strewn across the kitchen floor. Boyf told police there wasn't anyone there, and everyone just sort of assumed some sort of animal had somehow gotten in or the wind had blown the bin over, and he had imagined the shadow or mistaken coats hanging up for a person or something. Then it got even weirder. So my dad is really drunk, and he can talk forever when he is drunk, so it's about 2 a.m., and we are sitting in the living room, and he's still waffling on about a load of crap to me and the boyfriend, when suddenly, the boyfriend grabbed my leg, looking super scared. I sort of frowned at him and looked at him like, WTF? And he stared at me, really freaked out. Eventually we managed to get away from my dad and go to bed, and as soon as we got upstairs, my boyfriend said he'd seen an old woman standing in the doorway staring at us. He said she was pretty old and wearing some sort of dark blue housecoat, and she stood and stared for about 30 seconds, then walked off down the hallway into the kitchen. I freaked out, dived under the covers, and made him keep the light on for the rest of the night. The next day, we told my dad about it, and he said his aunt used to wear a blue house coat. He showed an old picture of his aunt to my boyfriend, I had never met her, and she had died when I was quite little, and the boyfriend started crying and said, yeah, that was the woman he had seen standing in the doorway. This happened to me about two years ago. My boyfriend and I fell on hard times and found ourselves without a car for a few months. We managed to get by on rides from friends and Uber when we could afford it. This particular night, we wanted to splurge on Chinese food and decided to walk a mile up the road to the local Chinese restaurant. We had a great time, but on the walk home, we got into an argument. I can't remember what it was about, I just remember that it was 10.30 at night and he stormed off ahead of me. There are a few different streets you can take to get back to our house, and he got so far ahead of me that I wasn't sure what route he had taken. I'm normally very independent, but I'm a petite woman, and the thought of walking back roads alone at night scared the shit out of me. I should also mention that we had been drinking before leaving the house that evening, so I'm sure alcohol played a huge part in whatever the argument may have been. I tried calling my boyfriend's cell phone, but it kept going to voicemail, so I gave up and committed to walking home alone. I was wearing a baggy hoodie. I pulled it up over my head, put my glasses on, and kept my head down as I walked in an attempt to mask what an easy target I was. It was going just fine until I got within a few blocks of my street. I was walking against the flow of traffic, most cars passed me like normal. But one car slowed down almost completely to a stop right next to me. I will never forget the moment when I raised my head and looked through the passenger side window and locked eyes with a 20-something-year-old man as he drove past me. The whole thing must have lasted three seconds, but I could swear to God that time slowed down and it took an eternity for his car to pass. I swear that I could see exactly what he was thinking and feeling just by looking at his face, first the curiosity as he wanted to get a better look at my face, and then the transition from relief to excitement as he determined that I was worthy prey. It stopped me in my tracks, sent chills down my spine, and had my heart instantly beating a thousand miles a minute. Even now, I can't dwell on the memory of his face, it gives me nightmares. His intent was clear, and I've never felt more afraid for my safety in all my life. The car continued on to the nearest street where it could turn around, and he shot down it without even putting his turn signal on. I immediately started running like hell for my street. I was about a block away, and I didn't want him to see what street I'd gone down. Keep in mind that it's early fall in Tennessee, the temperature is about 77 degrees, I had my hoodie with me just in case the temperature dropped in the evening, it was muggy as hell and I was also carrying a backpack that held my purse, a water bottle, and our leftovers from dinner. I make it to a house at the end of my street and duck behind the bushes while watching the street behind me to see if the guy comes back. I see him peel out of the street he had previously turned down and slow down almost to a stop. He creeps up to the street just behind mine and turns down it really slowly. By now, I'm shaking violently. I turn and haul ass down my street to try and get to my house. I call my boyfriend repeatedly, but I get no answer. I start texting him, as best I can while running, 
that I'm in danger and I need help. For some reason, during all of this, I never thought to call 911. I guess I assumed that they wouldn't believe me or that even if they did, they couldn't help me anyway. My boyfriend, however, was somewhere within the vicinity and would be the more logical choice to come to my aid. I finally reach the house, race inside, and lock the door behind me. I leave all of the lights off because I don't know if the car managed to hit our street in time to see me run in the house, and I didn't want to show any indication that anyone was home. Not even 30 seconds after I got inside, I saw the exact same car. It drove slowly past my house, turned around on the cul-de-sac, and drove on. I started crying hysterically. Five minutes later, my boyfriend made it home. I tried to tell him what had happened, but he thought I was making it all up since we had fought and that I just wanted to make him feel like a total dick for walking off and leaving me. To this day, he has no fucking idea.